Relationships are incredibly important, especially the physical flesh and blood ones where you're looking someone in the eye in the same room as them because we know the electromagnetic fields of the body emanate about 15 feet out from the body, you know, touching them. So there's that oxytocin release and that electrical interaction that occurs with touch. I mean, it's, it's so important. Hey everybody, Dr. Axe here. So excited for another edition here of uh, the Dr. Axe Show. We're gonna be talking to Ben Greenfield. Ben is a good buddy of mine and uh, the guy is an expert on natural health. He's got a new book out called Boundless or Becoming Boundless, which I'm super excited to talk about a little bit. Also, he's a former bodybuilder, Ironman triathlete. I've seen him on TV not too long ago uh, racing in an obstacle course race called Spartan. He's a New York Times bestselling author. He founded the nutrition company called Kion, which has got these amazing superfoods and other, other things that are great for taking your health to the next level. And also, he's got an amazing website and podcast, over a quarter of a million monthly visitors where he's got, again, blogs, podcasts, lots of things on there. Ben, welcome to the show. Dude, thanks for having me on. But the most important thing that you just said is that I was on TV, which automatically legitimizes <laughs> me, I think. That's right. Well, I think I'll say this. So I, uh, I was so impressed seeing you on that, on that race a while back. And, uh, and, you know, obviously a tough, uh, you know, obstacle courses, um, the Spartan races are, are pretty tough, but I, uh, the reason why I believe you and trust you is one, I've known you for a lot of years, but also, uh, you, everything you do, you, you do on yourself. Like I know that whether it's in your book or on your podcast, when you're talking about, sort of doing these different types of biohacks or enhancing longevity, like living longer, you know, you look young, you're super fit. And also, again, you've tried out a lot of these things on yourself, which is one of the things that I, I love and respect. I should probably figure out at some point how to clone myself so I could do more <laughs> damaging and fringe things and just have extra me's to, to kill off. But uh, yeah, for now it's, it's just me. And yeah, I, I never want to be like, you know, the blogger in my mom's basement, just writing about stuff. I, I'd rather get out there in the trenches and, and try things out. So, uh, so that's, that's what I do. And I'm not dead yet, baby. So let's just keep it up. I love it. So even right now I see in the back of your room here, you got the juve light, which I got one now and I'll tell you, I mean, it's amazing. Like I can tell I sleep deeper. I mean, I've noticed a change in my own body using that infrared light. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, like the research keeps coming out on on uh, photobiomodulation, this, this use of of light therapy, particularly kind of like that, you know, six hundred and fifty ish to nine hundred nanometer wavelength of light spectrum. If you look on PubMed, it's probably uh, Dr. Michael Hamblin, H uh, A M B L I N, who has the lion's share of the research, the good research put out on this stuff, but. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, long story short is is your mitochondria, uh, specifically uh, part of your mitochondria called cytochrome C oxidase. It responds very favorably to photons of light, particularly photons of light from that red wavelength or infrared wavelength. And so, you know, when you expose yourself to that, you you get you get some of it from the sun, but you know, when when you kind of amplify the power and bring kind of you know the, this same concept into your home or into your sauna or what have you. Yeah. I mean, you, you can increase the activity of, of neural cells. Uh, a lot of men are using this to increase the activity of the Leydig cells and the testes, uh, it can enhance, uh, some of the, some of the epidermal lining and, and assist with collagen and elastin. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm using infrared now just about, uh, every day. And, um, you know, I, I mean, you, you can, like I mentioned, get a lot of the natural effects just from getting out in the sun, but that's the way a lot of these, these biohacking protocols go is you're just taking something you get from nature and kind of concentrating it in, in higher doses that might require a little less time, you know, in, in your home or in your office, you know, like a, like a cryotherapy chamber, right? You could go, go for a brisk walk outside for 60 minutes and get a decent amount of cold or you could just like concentrate it in a really hefty dose for three minutes. So, you know, I'm, I'm personally a fan of both Josh. Like I like to, I like to get out in the sunlight, but I also like to flip on these panels, you know, when I'm sipping my cup of coffee in the morning. Yeah. I love that. You know, today I'm in Nashville and it's a pretty cloudy day. I know up in the Northeast where you're at, you're in Washington, right? Yeah. Yeah. In the Northwest in, uh, in inland Washington. 
you know, and especially certain areas of the country, you're not going to be getting some of these things all the time or as much as maybe you'd like to. So I think I, I love it for that reason. And then I know right now, if anybody's watching, I know we've got people listening to podcasts and watching on YouTube. Uh, you're walking on a treadmill right now. Yeah. Yeah. I have one of these, uh, manual treadmills in my office, uh, for, well, for, for two, I got the manual for two reasons. Number one is treadmills, like basically all of them come with a, a hefty Wi-Fi panel that you can't disconnect. And even if you, if you're you know, not on the whole, don't bombard your body with Wi-Fi bandwagon, you know, treadmills kind of like home appliances are one of the biggest contributors to dirty EMF or dirty electricity, non-native EMF, which is why, you know, that whole lineup of treadmills at the gym, if, if you have the option to go outdoors or, you know, go run laps around the, the basketball court in the gym or whatever, it's, it's a lot healthier for the, for the calcium channels in your cells. And so I've got the manual treadmill, so I don't have the Wi-Fi or, or the dirty electricity, you know, in my office because I'm pretty careful in places where I spend a lot of time like my bedroom or like my office, but rather than getting, you know, like, like a, a popular manual treadmill for an office is like the Woodway treadmill. They do a pretty mm -hmm. good one, but it only goes like three miles an hour. And so yeah. I got one of these, uh, like these curves treadmills called a, a true form. You'll find yeah. this a lot of times in like CrossFit or gyms where they want to focus a little bit more on running form and rather than using the manual or the, the electronic treadmill, they'll use the manual for that reason. And I like it because it doubles up for me as a workout station. Like I can do, well, I'll, I'll show you here. Like right now I'm walking, but if I wanted to, I could just like go into a full on sprint without actually, you know, pushing buttons or needing to mess with a dashboard. So, you know, it kind of turns into a handy little, uh, almost, uh, kind of high intensity interval training device for me where I can do little sprints between phone calls and, and podcasts and stuff like that. I love it, man. Actually, Chelsea and I have used the treadmill a brand you're on. We do a, uh, a Pilates slash running class here. It's called Sculpt House in Nashville. And so we do, you do about 30 minutes of, uh, 30 minutes of intervals on a, um, on a true form and then you get off and do Pilates, but it's, uh, I love those treadmills are fin they're, they're, uh, th those are awesome. Sculpt House sounds like a good place to go to, to build your gun show. Yeah, man. That's right. Um, there you go, man. I love it. Well, I, uh, man, I got so much I want to talk to you about. One of the things I know that you've really spent a lot of time studying recently is longevity, um, how to live longer. You know, what, what are some of the biggest things, discoveries you've come across as you've done your research and whether it's medical studies or talking to experts uh, or, you know, trying things out on yourselves? What are some of the biggest, I guess, things you've discovered in terms of longevity? Oh man, <laughs> there, there's a lot. I mean, like honestly, over 200 pages of, of that book you mentioned, uh, Boundless, are just devoted to anti-aging and longevity from the, you know, the, the ancestral wisdom we can get from, you know, blue zones like Sardinia or, or Cara or, um, you know, or, or Loma Linda, or also some of these more modern scientific protocols that are kind of in increasingly garnering interest, you know, like peptides and, you know, stem cell protocols, et cetera. But let's see, a few of the interesting areas that I think folks should pay attention to, uh, one would be the, the CERT enzymes, you know, like CERT1 and CERT2 and CERT3, these CERT2 and activating enzymes in the body have a really profound effect on particularly uh, cell protection and uh, a slowing of DNA damage, which is really one of the primary reasons that, that things break uh, as we age, you know, the production of, of misfolded proteins or, or damaged proteins. And granted, you know, when, when you look at DNA, really, it's only about 20% of the reason that we'd age and 80% of its lifestyle and, and epigenetics, etc. But protecting the DNA should be pretty high up on folks, uh, you know, anti-aging totem pole, uh, as should protecting uh, the cellular machinery and the, these sirtuin enzymes, you know, they can do both. And many people are probably familiar with common sirtuin activators, such as uh, you know, the resveratrol in red wine or grape skins, or the, the, the polyphenols and, and, you know, dark compounds on like a cacao or a dark chocolate. Um, you know, blueberries are another common example, but uh, there were, there were a couple 
that I came across while writing the book that appear to be, you know, some of the more powerful ones. And, and one in particular is, uh, is facetin. Uh, facetin is a, is a very powerful uh, sirtuin activating uh, food. And that's something that you get in very concentrated amounts in wild strawberries and to a lesser extent, uh, black currant and blueberry and bilberry. And so you can, you can you know, go harvest wild strawberries or, or grow them, but you can also buy, for example, like a wild strawberry powder or a wild blueberry powder or a black currant powder, you know, in bulk from something like Amazon and just add that to a morning smoothie, you know, or to, you know, perhaps you, you make like, you know, collagen ice cream or, or keto ice cream or something like that to eat in the evening. You can add just a little bit of this wild strawberry powder extract to it and the facetin in it is in very high amounts and it's wonderful for your sirtuin enzymes. And another thing uh, related to sirtuins that's, you know, all, also seemingly taking the anti-aging world by storm is uh, NAD. Uh, and sirtuin enzymes can help to keep NAD levels elevated and NAD in the same way can help to activate a lot of these sirtuins in the body. And, um, you know, with NAD, uh, there, there are a variety of ways to increase your levels of that. Uh, you know, fasting can do it, um, as can exercise, a little bit of heat, a little bit of cold. Uh, but I'm now using NAD quite a bit as a, as a supplement. And kind of the standard protocol in an ideal scenario would be you top off your levels. You get them really high by doing a series of NAD uh, IVs. And intravenous administration of NAD is something that can increasingly be found in, in a lot of clinics. If you search, you know, if you, you Google, for example, NAD IV in the name of your city, you'll often find a, a clinic that will medically supervise the administration of, of NAD. And typically you go in for a few days of, you know, around a thousand milligrams of NAD administered uh, into the blood via IV. And then you can just keep those levels topped off with daily use after that of uh, NAD taken orally or like uh, another common way to get it is uh, nicotinamide riboside, which a lot of companies use now in their supplements or even uh, oral uh, NMN, which is kind of like a precursor to NAD that you just kind of dissolve sublingually in the mouth. Uh, but, but NAD... And some of these sirtuin enzymes are very interesting. And one other that I'd throw at you that uh, seems to be a, a, a really good strategy for longevity. You know, some of this research comes out of uh, Russia on, on these peptides, which are amino acid sequences that can do things like shorten the rate at which telomeres uh, or, or, or decrease the rate at which telomeres shorten. Uh, and also uh, increased mitochondrial density and kind of that loss of mitochondria that occurs with aging pretty dramatically. Uh, th this one I'll mention to you can also uh, decrease the rate at which you lose your, your immune-enhancing T cells as you age. And some of the clinical research in Russia on humans has shown a decrease in all-cause mortality and a significant increase in lifespan. Like we're talking years on lifespan and that one's called uh, Epitalon, E-P-I-T-H-A-L-O-N. And a lot of these peptides, they are injectable, like with an insulin syringe. And you can go to uh, peptidesociety.org where you could, you could uh, find a physician near you who can prescribe this stuff. And basically one single yearly 20-day protocol of Epitalon gives you all these longevity enhancing benefits. It's one of the more powerful compounds I discovered while writing the book. Very safe, very effective. And again, it's just 20 days. You, you pull a little you know, fat up next to your belly button. You do a little insulin syringe injection for 20 days. I mean, the, the results are dramatic for that one. And a lot of folks also report things like better sleep and, and higher libido. Uh, better immune function, they get sick less. And so that one's got a lot of cool effects too, that, uh, that epitalon uh, peptide. Yeah, it's so interesting, you know, thinking about, and, and, and as you're saying, these NAD, mito, you know, mitochondria, the importance of taking care of these things like telomeres for anti-aging is so important. Uh, I know one of the things you mentioned too is intermittent fasting and NAD. I know when I'd read up on NAD in the past, I actually had read a little bit about keto, uh, but a lot about fasting and how that really can help uh, with the, uh, you know, with, with NAD and specifically the enzymes, the sirtuin enzymes you were talking about. I love one of the other things too, I know you get into your book and by the way, when I looked up your book online, I was kind of blown away. 
it's a big book. I mean, would you call it yeah. also somewhat of a reference manual? You cover so much in there. Yeah, it's uh, 608 pages long and it was over 1,200 pages when I turned it into the publisher. I couldn't get any big New York publishing house to, to take it just because it's, it's so comprehensive. And I, I've, I like to write big books. I wanted a book that wasn't kind of a flash in the pan, you know, sexy little airport title, uh, yep. but would instead be something folks could use as, as you just mentioned, Josh, you know, as, as like a reference guide, you know, kind of a cookbook for anything in the body from immune system to digestion to, you know, mold, mycotoxins, Lyme, anti-aging, you know, cognitive function. And I, you know, I'm, I even get into like smart drugs and psychedelics and nootropics and all these biohacks. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a big book. It's, it's kind of a weapon. Wow. I love it. I mean, for, for me, myself, I go back and look at what books I keep going back to. I mean, the books, you know, there are certain books I have on my shelf that I open on a regular basis. I have a few Chinese medicine books, for instance, that I'm always going to on a monthly basis. But I love that you created a book like that because again, I think for most people, hey, I love books I can read and enjoy in one sitting, but also the value of being able to go back to them over and over and over again. And that style you're talking about is awesome. I want to encourage you guys, check out Ben's book right now. It's on Amazon. It is called Boundless um, on there right now. You can check it out. Again, Boundless, it's on, uh, on Amazon. And bookstores nationwide, you can find this book as well. All right, Ben, one of the things too that I love that you are I really resonate with me on is we, we talk a lot about natural medicine and, and doing these hacks to help our health. Um, but you're also a strong believer when we're talking about longevity in relationships. So what did you come across as you've done all your research on relationships? How do we have good relationships and how much do those actually impact our longevity and health? Well, very, very profoundly. I mean, we know that that loneliness is is basically it's a it's a carcinogen, and you know, contributes to, to heart disease, to increased blood pressure, and to a variety of chronic diseases just because of the increased stress that we experience when we are lonely. You know, we are hardwired to be communal creatures and to be interdependent on one another, and that that cannot be replicated with social media. It, it, there really is a different hormonal response. There's even a different uh, yeah, uh, electrical field response when we are interacting digitally versus when we are interacting in real flesh and blood relationships. I mean, right now, Josh, you and I are are talking digitally we're on uh, we're on zoom and neither one of us are detecting our brain's electromagnetic field our heart's electromagnetic field i didn't shake your hand right yeah. so I, I i didn't get that oxytocin release that i would have if we were face to face i mean heck this whole interview just absolutely sucks because you and i aren't <laughs> aren't together yeah the same room. uh but but th this idea of social connectedness and real flesh and blood relationships it cannot be underemphasized we know that you know in the blue zones for example you know where there are a variety of things that they do that seem to enhance longevity or, or increase the number of centenarians in areas like that like we know that uh, the consumption of of low glycemic index foods you know particularly things like legumes and purple potatoes are something that that pops up quite a bit. We know the consumption of of tannin rich beverages like, you know, like like wine or, or beer with plenty of hops in it, or you know, even like uh, you know kombuchas, uh, teas such as green tea or, or black tea. Uh, the consumption of rosemary, thyme, etc. A lot of these are important. Uh, we know that the air pollution is important, particularly the absence of smoking, but also you know just clean air uh, that's not polluted a lot of these things you know we see in the blue zones but you know if you look at a venn diagram and uh, uh, and and the overlapping characteristics that are predominant in all of these zones there's there's really only a few things you would find in a venn diagram you know one would be no smoking one would be wild plant intake another would be those low glycemic index foods that i talked about uh, one is is time outdoors spent in nature, but then a fifth is relationships, family dinners, family gatherings, social gatherings, church attendance. We know that this has a profound impact on longevity. And I mean, like, you know, for example, in, in my own home, uh, there, there's a researcher named Sachin Panda who has put out a lot of this research on time-restricted feeding, this idea that you might eat, for example, from only 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. 
as a health span and lifespan enhancing technique. And I totally break that rule nearly every single day when I'm at home because we prioritize family dinners. I mean, you know, once everything's done for the day, whether it's, you know, jujitsu and tennis for the kids or work and a workout for me, or, you know, my wife uh, often will play tennis or she's taking care of the, the chickens and the goats outside. We gather together as a family, but usually it's towards the end of the day, like it's around 8 p.m. And we have these wonderful family dinners where we're playing games like, like, like table topics or, uh, you know, or uh, last night we played, um, you know, exploding kittens, just like a fun card game. And we share our gratitude journals because we all have a gratitude practice in the morning, but then we share what we wrote in our gratitude journals at night as a family and we laugh and, and we cook food together and then we finish and we push the chairs away and we, we play music and we read books and you know, that, that end cap at, at the end of the day is so important to me. And, and I know that the benefits of that, not just for health and lifespan, but also just love and happiness far exceed the benefits I might get from, you know, the time restricted feeding practice of maybe, you know, finishing up the last meal of the day by 6 p.m. So, yeah, relationships are incredibly important, especially the physical flesh and blood ones where you're looking someone in the eye in the same room as them because we know the electromagnetic fields of the body emanate about 15 feet out from the body, you know, touching them. So there's that oxytocin release and that electrical interaction that occurs with touch. I mean, it's, it's so important, um, you know, and, and probably one of the reasons why, you know, like Jean Calment, the longest living human on record who recently died, I think she was about, I want to say 124, uh, right around in there, this French woman, you know, she smoked cigarettes, but at the same time, you know, she was a member of all these social clubs and had wonderful relationships. And you can almost undo a lot of the damages of an unhealthy lifestyle if you're just a happy person with, with friends and a close relationship with your family. I love it, man. Of, of all the things you've talked about, I mean, this is, I think this is one of the things people need to hear most. You know, I, I was, uh, talking to um, a person I'm working on writing my next book, one of my future books with. And we were, we were, we were talking about some of this stuff today in terms of just the importance of, uh, you know, our, our relationships and how emotions actually affect our internal organs. And uh, it's just absolutely, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just fascinating. You know, I, one of the things I brought up to her, I don't know if you saw this, but um, they did a, there was a study recently done and they went and it, it was, they interviewed kids to say what, find out what they want to be when they grow up. And, you know, when we were kids, it was like astronaut, fireman, president, those sort of things. Today, by far, the number one thing kids said was, I want to be a YouTuber. Everything came back as famous was by far number one and wealthy number two. But all, all these things you're saying, if somebody's priorities in life are just to be famous, then the, the decisions they make, what they decide to do versus, you know, I think for you and I, you know, and, and a lot of people watching and listening to this or maybe wired differently where we're saying, you know what, the goal for us is to be fruitful. The goal for us is to bless and love others and, uh, you know, bring heaven to earth, create a better planet uh, and just be fulfilled in life. And whether I'm famous and I'm fulfilled or nobody knows about me and I'm fulfilled, we know that we're created to be in a relationship and, have joy and be grateful and those sort of things. It's just, just interesting to think about. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, it, it can be lonely at the top for a lot of these there folks. When we look at, you know, Robin Williams, yeah, they're seemingly happy, but they're, they're lonely. And uh, you see that a lot with, with celebrities and even some of these YouTube or Instagram personalities. It's all digital. It's all, you know, one to many as one person to an audience and not a lot of close friends or family relationships. And um, there's actually a really good book called The Second Mountain that describes how many of us spend our lives in this pursuit of fame or making it or checking off Maslow's hierarchy of needs like, you know, survival and, and sex and shelter. And we reach the top of that first mountain and we realize how little happiness and fulfillment occurs when we're at the top of that first mountain and the second mountain in that book is a mountain in which we're building community and vulnerability and interdependence upon others and 
really working on, on ourselves as almost like a village rather than a lone wolf competing to get to the top. And man, I mean, when, when you, when you discover that second mountain and you realize how interdependent we are on each other and how crucial that is, as crucial as making money or surviving or having a shelter or anything like that, I mean, it really flips a light bulb on. And, you know, as you just alluded to, we're fighting an uphill battle now with that just because it's so easy to make money or to feel like you're taking care of yourself by just being on the internet or being a famous personality. But I mean, it's not where true health and happiness and even lifespan are derived from. Yeah, it's so good. You know, one of the things I love too is I follow you on Instagram and I kind of see what you're up to. Uh, you've just, you've got a lot of routines too. I know that you're always mixing things up though. I love that too, is that you are such an adventure. In fact, one of the things that if people ask me about you, I would say one, uh, my experience with you, Ben, is you've got a great heart. You really, you know, love and care for people. You, you've got priorities, but also you love adventure. And so tell me a little bit about that. I want to talk about two things. One, how important is venture in life? You know, maybe share with me like one or two things you've done recently or in 20, you know, in the past in 2019 or 2018, some great adventures you had. And then also would love to talk about the routine, some of the health, some of the daily routines you have that can help everything from sleep to happiness. Yeah. Well, I, I think I painted myself into a corner for a while of being almost like this masochistic adventurer. You know, I've done the, the, the Spartan death race and the, all the toughest mutter competitions and trained with the Navy SEALs down in Encinitas and just put myself through the ringer and in, in all these adventure races and competitions. And, you know, you mentioned things like the obstacle racing reality TV show. And, you know, I did a broken skull challenge, you know, hand to hand combat shows, and just these things that really just beat you up and spit you out. And honestly, I think I spent such a long time engaged in those type of really almost like masochistic challenging adventures because I was trying to find myself, trying to prove myself as a man, trying to really, you know, achieve manhood in a different way than what I think is healthy. You know, I, I would love to see more, especially young men, go through a rite of passage, go through, you know, a journey when they're younger, whether it's like a wilderness survival week or, you know, some type of, of fasting protocol or some type of, of difficult endeavor when they're young and then recognition of that passage into manhood so that they're not spending, you know, 10 years of their life after the fact trying to prove to the world that they're a man. But despite that, uh, yeah, I, I, I also learned a lot from adventures like that, you know, because I would use that kind of stuff as a playground for, you know, how many electrolytes do you need when you're going three days in a row? Or, you know, what's the best way to hack endurance, whether it be the utilization of ketones or ketosis, or, you know, whether it be, you know, the, the type of recovery protocols that you might use to bounce back faster after something like that. Um, but now, you know, I, I've increasingly become more attracted towards nature-based adventures that simply bring me closer to to the planet and to, to God's good earth and to, you know, a lot of the magic that surrounds us in nature. So what, what, what I think a lot of people would benefit from that I've found a lot of joy and benefit from for myself and for my family are things like uh, wilderness survival courses, right? Where you're going out for three to five to seven days and learning how to make fire or how to filter water or how to make primitive weaponry. Uh, I think that another, you know, and, and, and just to give people practical examples, like the Boulder Outdoor Survival School, the boss, like they're, they're probably one of the top organizations for that. Uh, there's another place near me in Idaho that myself and my kids go to called um, Twin Eagles Wilderness Camp. You know, they have survival school and wilderness adventures for kids and adults. And they even organize, you know, vision quests for adolescents, you know, to go off in nature and find themselves. And um, so there, there's a lot of places now that have, you know, wilderness survival school or wilderness immersions. Uh, similarly, I think that, that hunting is another very, very good way to go on adventures, but to also be close to nature. And you're, you're almost engaged in a challenging adventure that's more practical and really more ancestral than, let's say, like a Spartan race or an Ironman triathlon or something like that, where you're challenged, 
You know, I think that bow hunting is a very, very good example of this because you, know, you have to learn to stalk and you have to, you have to get closer to the animal, much closer than you'd be able to get with a firearm. And, you know, and you can, you can go all over the world or in your backyard and, and learn how to hunt. And not only are there, every state has hunter's education classes, but, you know, there are also good courses like in Kettlefells, Washington. You know, my family and I recently did a, a course called Awaken the Hunter, where you show up and you learn how to blood trail, how to track, how to identify different prints of different animals. You learn how to field dress the animal, all the butchery techniques for butchering the animal from nose to tail, and then wild game cookery, and there's some some plant foraging thrown in, so you learn how to collect, you know, plants in the wilderness rather than just say, you know, hunting with a can of baked beans and some beef jerky. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm a really big fan of these like hunting and wilderness survival type of protocols as far as adventures that I think are a little bit more natural but still challenging. And and you know, there there are certain people who who I think are doing a real really good job demonstrating this. You know, people people you could follow. And you know, as you mentioned, you know, I, I'm I'm now putting out a lot of this information. Um you know, another guy that, that I like these days who's doing a lot of this stuff is um, Daniel Vitalis. He uh, used to run the company Sir Thrival, and now he's doing a lot more kind of nature-based type of videos and, you know, and, and plant foraging, things like that. Uh, another good guy who I had on my podcast is Tim Corcoran, uh, who runs that Twin Eagles Wilderness Survival School. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it seems like as people are becoming more disconnected from nature, uh, paradoxically, a lot more of these opportunities for people to connect to nature are popping up because, you know, more and more folks are realizing there's a need for this and not a lot of parents are teaching it to their children. And so these survival schools and wilderness schools and hunting schools are now popping up and a little bit more accessible to folks. So I'm a huge fan of that for, for adventure. Um, and then you also asked me about routine and obviously there, there's a lot of things that go into, uh, go into my routine, but is there anything in particular you wanted me to unpack, like whether it's sleep or food or morning routine or something like that? Actually, just while it's on my head, I want to ask, I, I do want to get into routine, but I wanted to ask you uh, about a couple of things. One, have you done any research or seen anything on, uh, you know, sort of the, the, um, the brain waves that uh, nature gives off? So for instance, you know, it's funny when anybody does any type of sleep music or sort of trans music for uh, meditation, a lot of it is the sound of rain, the sound of the ocean, or the sound of the forest. Have you read anything on, hey, this, the waves or some of the Japanese forest bathing or anything like that? Yeah, a lot of it is theta. And some of yeah. it, when you're, in, when you're in a more kind of hyper-aware type of situation, which you're moving through nature and not just doing like, let's say, a traditional Native American sit spot where you're just sitting in nature and smelling and, and sensing and, and feeling and seeing... Um, if you're active, a lot of times you'll get that alpha brain rate production where you're a little bit more in the zone, you're more awake, you're more alert, uh, kind of similar to what a lot of people get through plant medicine through the use of something like, you know, psilocybin, you get that little bit of enhanced DMT release from the pineal gland and just this increased alpha brain wave, you know, the, this, this ability to be able to enter into the zone a little bit more readily with, with focus and awareness. And then when it comes to more of the relaxing elements of nature, you know, like the Shinrin Yoku forest bathing you talked about, or, you know, listening to nature sounds or, you know, laying on the beach, listening to the ocean waves crash, a lot of that kind of shifts you a little bit more into theta, you know, which is kind of a, yeah. a bit more of that deep meditative state. So yeah, it's interesting. And, and, and it is funny. You're right. Like, you know, all the good sleep apps do have you know, the forest or the beach or, or the freaking. I never understood the whales, like the sound of whales crying. <laughs> Apparently, you know, whale mating calls lull a lot of people into sleep. Uh, but <laughs> hey, whatever works for you. I love it. That's great. All right. So talking about routine then. Yeah, I would say for a few things. One, you know, one, one of the things that I think people respect so much about you, and by the way, I have uh, the pastor of my church, his name is Lyle Phillips. He, he's a huge fan of you. He's done CrossFit in the past and he speaks all over the country, but I know he follows you. And, uh, and so we've talked, you've came up a few times in conversations, even this past week, I told him that I was going to be interviewing you. But all that being said, um, you know, I think that you have had a lot of success. Like when I look at you, I say, and, and listen, there, there are people in life that I see, hey, I, you could call that person successful, but I don't feel like they have a balanced life. Like for you, it's like 
you've got two boys that I know you spend time with and have a good relationship with. You've got a wife you spend time with. And so you love a life of adventure, um, but you also have these deep relationships and also you've had success in your business. So I think for a lot of people, you know, I think that's, you know, for me, that's a desirable, that's attractive and seeing in somebody that they, uh, you know, that they're able to do all of these things and have what I consider to be a successful life. So that being said, what are some of the things, daily habits you do for just general what you feel like is being, I guess, successful in life uh, would be where, where I would start? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll give you a few. First of all, when I wake up, I don't get out of bed right away. I find that I'm less stressed during the morning and more focused if I wake up and kind of have this idea of giving myself the affluence of time. Like there's no need to jump out of bed right away. And so I typically start off with journaling and a little bit of devotional or scriptural listening or reading. Like uh, what I mean by that is I'm not going to read research journals or fitness articles or anything like that when I first get up. Right now, for example, up on my bedside is uh, Stillness is the Key by Ryan Holiday. Like the, those are the type of books I'll read in the morning just for a little while, you know, five minutes or so. And then I have a journal that I write in called the Christian Gratitude Journal. And I write down one thing uh, that I'm grateful for. I write down one truth that I discovered from that morning's reading or listening. And then finally, I write down one person who I can pray for or help or serve that day. So I'm kind of going into my day with a little bit more of an others facing mentality and this idea that if I do that every day, you know, I'm, I'm able to help 365 people, you know, a year, even if it's something as simple as saying a prayer for that person or something as complex as actually, you know, whatever, getting a bottle of wine and walk into my neighbor's house who I wrote in my journal that morning and, you know, giving them a bottle of wine and a nice card, you know? And so, uh, so I always start off my morning like that. And that, I think that's a, that's a really powerful part of my routine. Uh, another thing that I do is uh, always in the morning, I give myself typically while the coffee's brewing or the, or the hot water for the tea is on, I give myself about 10 to 15 minutes every morning. I shoot for 15 minutes if I can of mobility and deep tissue work, meaning I've got all these well, you talked about books that are like go-tos for you. One book I, I like that I, that I have in the living room is Becoming a Supple Leopard, which is kind of like this cookbook for any aches or pains that you have. It kind of shows you, okay, here's where to put a little cross ball or here's where to roll with the roller. And I'll just target anything that's tight, anything that hurts, you know, anything that's, you know, feeling sore from the previous days, you know, kettlebell workout or whatever. And I just give myself 15 minutes of me time. You know, usually I'll have a podcast or an audio book on. And I just kind of use that time to do some self-inflicted deep tissue work. And I swear, like, you know, th those 75 minutes that add up over the course of the week where I've got those 15 minutes every morning, it just helps to keep me injury free. It gives my day a little bit of momentum because if you start your day with something physical, I find you feel a little bit more motivated to stay physical throughout the rest of the day. So I always have that, that 15 minutes of mobility in, in the morning. Um, another, another few things that I, th I think are helpful for me from a productivity standpoint is I give myself at any given point during the day, kind of based off of Cal Newport's book, Deep Work, four hours of no push notifications, no emails. You know, I even installed on my computer this tab modifier on the browser that gets rid of any notifications of how many you know, pieces of mail are in your inbox should you happen to glance at the Gmail browser and you know, see you have 20 emails. Instead, this just kind of blanks everything out. So I don't even know how many emails I've had. You know, everything's off, no messages, you know, nothing at all. And I simply focus like a horse with blinders for about four hours. For me, that's typically from about 10 until around 2 p.m. And I find that to be a really key part of my day. If I, even if, you know, if I'm not working an eight hour day or a 12 hour day, you know, and I just have those four hours, I can get a lot done if I shut down all reactivity, like responding to emails and phone calls and messages and focus on pure productivity for those four hours. Um, then if I could throw uh, one other at you, it's that um, I, I focus pretty intensively, you know, when it comes to personal productivity and 
kind of figuring out how I can make the biggest impact in the world. I don't really read newspapers. I don't watch Netflix or even documentaries for that matter. Um, I'm very self-selected about the books that I read. I have a pretty intensive filter for anything consumer wise that comes across my plate where I ask myself, okay, is this information I can take and I can turn around and synthesize and help out the world with this information? Or is this simply, you know, useless facts that I'm cluttering my brain with, you know, kind of like how when Sherlock Holmes meets Watson in, in Arthur Conan Doyle's book and Watson introduces himself, you know, Sherlock Holmes notes that he'll be quick to forget Watson's name because he doesn't want that extra fact cluttering up his brain. And um, for me, keeping a clear head is very important. So not only do I only consume information that I know is directly relevant to the impact that I'm able to make on the world, but then I also uh, have an Evernote doc that I sync between my Kindle my phone and my computer so that should anything come across my plate that I need to remember that I need to do later, uh, that I need to schedule on a specific day. As soon as I'm told about it, I go straight to whatever device happens to be nearby. I put it into Evernote. So I'm never thinking at the back of my head, I got to do this. I got to do that. I need to remember this. So I, I kind of like that idea of keeping a clear head by just putting down tasks as, as soon as you learn them. And of course there are great, great courses or books for this type of thing. Like, you know, David Allen's getting things done is very good. Uh, there's another guy out there named, uh, Ari Meisel, M E I S E L who has entire systems built around automating and outsourcing and organizing. And, you know, it's all based on that concept of keeping a clear head. So, you know, th those are a few things waking up and having the affluence of time with that gratitude journaling. When I do get out of bed, doing some of that morning mobility work and, and breath work to kind of give myself momentum going into the day and to keep myself injury free. And then uh, working like a horse with blinders, focus on deep work, keeping a clear head and keeping myself distracted from unnecessary information. And then of course, like I mentioned earlier, you know, those, those family dinners and relationship time is, is kind of the end cap of the day. I love it, man. It's so, so great. I want to encourage everybody listening. Hey, check out Ben's new book just came out. It's called Boundless. It's how to upgrade your brain, optimize your body and defy aging. And he gets into a lot of the stuff we talked to today, everything from, uh, and a lot of the deep nutrition stuff we're talking about, how to transform your mitochondria, a lot about the blue zones, how to have a long life, but not just the thing that I love about this book, Ben, is it's not just about a long life. It's a fulfilled life. As you're talking about these things, I, I love it so important that you are loving others. You're blessing others. You're living a life of significance. And I think ultimately what I said earlier, I think people think they want to be famous. They think that's significant, but I think what's really significant is when you're transforming others' lives, bettering the life of others, which is something that I know that man, you've done such a good job of. So again, guys, check out his book, Boundless. It is on amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, bookstores nationwide. I think you'll love this book. And then the other thing I love about it, it's more of a reference manual. You can read through the whole book, but also you, this is a book you can go back to over and over and over again and uh, continue to glean the wisdom, use it in the future in that way as well. And also make sure to check out Ben's podcast. He has one of the most popular health podcasts of all time. His website, bengreenfield.com, is also fantastic. You can look up a lot of the information and things he's talked about. Uh, ben, you rock, man. Dude, thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, man, and everything that you do as well. So uh, keep up the good work yourself, man. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Ben Greenfield, again. And uh, hey, talk to you soon, bud. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. In some cases, individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein.